What's going on you guys? EP09 back here with another video and today the bodybuilding fans have spoken. Today we look at the most highly requested video my channel has received to date and it's in response to a video that I made the day after the 2022 Olympia. Today we take a closer look at both the 1999 Mr. Olympia and the 2022 Mr. Olympia competitions to see how 2022 stacks up to some of the legends of the sport that competed in 1999. Are there individuals in the 2022 Mr. Olympia lineup that could secure their place in history as one of the legends of the sport? This is a question that clearly needs to be addressed beyond my original video. I have never seen bodybuilding fans so passionate in the comments section before, nor have I ever been more compelled to do a video for the passionate fans out there. Now for many of you, the answer is clear, and I can understand why. But when I started looking at a detailed comparison, there were some surprises that I wasn't expecting. Times when the 2022 Mr. Olympia competitors surprised me on how they stack up, and I think they're going to surprise you guys too. I encourage you all to go watch my original video first before watching this one so you can get some sort of the backstory leading up to this video. I'll link the original video here. Alright, let's take a look. So, we need to take a few things into consideration with these comparisons. In terms of format, my original video was on the top six from each year, so we are going to primarily focus on the top six from each respective era. I have the top six individual routines from each era to compare. We'll compare side by side each individual routine based on where each individual placed in the top six. For each comparison, we will look at conditioning, muscle mass, symmetry, flow, and point out any glaring weaknesses between competitors. This is going to be where we perform our comparisons because this is the closest comparison we can achieve without considering things like, you know, that HD close-up stage shots didn't exist in 1999. However, 1999 may have had a bit of an advantage since the Olympia backdrop was primarily black, unlike the massively bright LED screens which fill up the entire Olympia stage that we have these days, you know, with the fire and lasers and sponsors, particularly that we witnessed in 2022. This has been a complaint amongst some competitors for the last few years, but of course, as I've said many times, the IFBB is a business, and the show cannot happen without sponsors getting as much recognition as can be reasonably offered. They did use a quote-unquote darker backdrop this year, uh, with the deep red, yellow, and orange fire colors, but does the 1999 backdrop offer more of an opportunity for the competitors to look at their absolute best? Many would argue yes. However, we enjoy an increased video quality these days. I don't want to say HD with the live stream that just happened because, you know, there was a little bit left to be desired in terms of quality because we know the technology exists in 2022, well, 2023 now, to live stream in HD, and this year's live stream did not afford us that luxury. However, the video quality was still better than what it was in 1999. The lighting was also different in each year. You know, it's funny, some would argue that the lighting back in 1999 was better than many years, including 2022. For the purposes of this comparison, I just want to point that out as a consideration. Overall, I am trying not to give any advantage to either year based on factors such as the differences in stages or the camera and lighting technology. You know, although when you point that out, you actually do see how the video quality in 1999 will stand up in this comparison. So, that's the housekeeping portion out of the way, let's get into the comparison. Okay, so, let's start with the 2022 Olympia. That's still pretty fresh in our minds, so I'd like to start there. The 2022 Olympia consisted of Hadi Chupin in first, Derek Lunsford in second, Nick Walker in third, Brandon Curry in fourth, Big Rami in fifth, and Samson Dowda in sixth. So we can start by considering what did make this lineup so great to begin with. Well, to start, the hype built up around the two-time Mr. Olympia winner defending his title against some of the best up-and-coming bodybuilders in the sport has witnessed for years was one thing. Each individual competitor does have their own strong points. Hadi Chupin began his professional career in the 212 division, but decided to move up to the open competition in 2019, and he caught the attention of the entire bodybuilding world back in 2019, when he showed up at the Vancouver Pro with what was considered comparable at the time to, you know, 90s level conditioning. Hadi was considered one of the most consistent competitors in the IFBB, placing within the top four at every Olympia competition he has ever competed in. At his fourth Mr. Olympia competition, Hadi took home the win. 
Derek Lunsford, you know, he was no stranger to gold medals himself. He was also a 212 competitor originally, and Derek decisively won the 2021 212 Olympia title and caused some speculation when he announced he would not be defending his 212 title and was going to move up to the Open. Many thought this was not necessarily the best decision, since it was being questioned at the time as to whether or not Derek could put on the muscle mass required to hang with the top competitors in the Open, especially in only one year of preparation. Of course, everyone knows that Derek was able to prove everyone wrong when he showed up at the Pittsburgh Pro and was holding his own against the giants of the sport in particular, you know, Nick Walker. So Derek taking second at his first open show, not to mention the Olympia, was definitely one of the highlights of the 2022 Mr. Olympia for many fans, analysts, and competitors actually. He showed up looking the biggest and most aesthetic of the top six with a ton of muscle and a very tight midsection. Looking at Nick Walker, Nick improved his aesthetics this year and was also bigger, harder, fuller, and had a tighter midsection. Nick was also very confident that he was going to be the winner. Placing fifth the year before, Nick had foregone any other competitions throughout the 2022 season, focusing solely on the top prize at the Mr. Olympia. Now looking at Brandon Curry, he's been considered one of the most aesthetic mass monsters in the modern era of the IFBB. Between his 2019 Olympia win and his notable improvements he seemed to be making via his physique updates throughout his prep, Brandon was regarded as half underdog, half contender for that top spot at the Olympia in 2022 I think. Brandon had an absolutely massive and proportionate upper body. Looking at Big Rami, Big Rami was definitely the biggest guy in the show. Big Rami is always the biggest guy in the show. Leading up to the 2022 Olympia, everyone had Big Rami winning, and everyone else was fighting for second place. 99% of the predictions out there had Big Rami in first, with no question. Although he did not show up as we all expected him to, Big Rami aided in the hype train by posting very regular, very impressive photo and video updates leading up to the competition. Rami had some decent conditioning at the night show, and a couple of his shots did look good at the night show, like the side chest and most muscular especially. The only person that could hang with Big Rami's size on that stage seemed to be our 6th place finisher, Samson Dowda. Now Samson was just as big as Big Rami, with great proportions, good conditioning, great posing, and a very aesthetic physique for a guy that was tipping the scales at, you know, 330 pounds earlier in his prep. With some impressive update pictures leading up to the competition, with especially within the last few weeks of his prep. Many had placed the stock of Samson down a much higher than what was previously considered. Samson was fated the number 29 at the athletes meeting, which had him standing right next to Big Rami in the initial quarter turns of the prejudging. And as I mentioned in a previous video, that pivotal moment changed his career forever. He could not be overlooked by the judges, and that landed him in the top six in his Olympia debut. So that being our top six from 2022, that brings us to what is considered the greatest Olympia by the majority of bodybuilding fans around the world, the 1999 Mr. Olympia competition. The biggest stage in bodybuilding was graced with the likes of Ronnie Coleman, who placed first that year, Flex Wheeler in second, Chris Cormier in third, Kevin Lavroni in fourth, Sean Ray in fifth, and Nasser Elson Batty in sixth. To start with the king of bodybuilding, Ronnie Coleman, considered the greatest bodybuilder of all time by many, came out of seemingly nowhere to win against Flex Wheeler in 1998. Ronnie had placed ninth in the 1997 Olympia, the same year that six-time Mr. Olympia Dorian Yates retired from competitive bodybuilding after winning his sixth title. So for him to come and take first place was a shock to everyone, the least not being Flex Wheeler, who obviously held that contendment into 1999 as he was visibly upset when the King was announced the winner in 1998. Flex Wheeler was nicknamed the Sultan of Symmetry and is considered to have one of the best overall physiques of all time. But Flex was not the only one that had a shot at that title though, you know? Chris Cormier was competing in his sixth Mr. Olympia that year, his highest placing being sixth up to that point. Kevin Lavroni was competing in his 8th Mr. Olympia and went on to play 2nd 4 times in the Mr. Olympia competition during the course of his career. Sean Ray holds a very impressive record of finishing inside the top 5 of the Mr. Olympia competition for 12 consecutive years, which no other bodybuilder has ever been able to replicate, including Dexter Jackson. Nasser Elson Batty was competing in his 6th Mr. Olympia competition up to 1999, finishing no less than 7th place, including the controversial 2nd place finish in the 1997 Olympia against Dorian Yates, who suffered from a torn tricep that year. So, to say the least, we have literal legends in this lineup. Even up to 1999, these guys were well known to either be current stars of the sport, 
or future legends. I will say that these guys were fighting for that top spot in 1999. I mean, look at the battle these guys are having in the pose down. They knew how tight the competition was, and I personally think they knew how high the stakes were for each of them to make their mark in the bodybuilding history books forever. You know, look at us. We're still here talking about it to this day. Just looking at the competitors, though, you can see the quality of the lineup. It was like nothing the bodybuilding world had ever seen before. These are the reasons why we are comparing these two great eras. So, the stage is set. These are your competitors. These are who we will be comparing to decide, was 1999 really the greatest Olympia of all time? So, let's begin. We're going to start with our 6th place finishers and work our way up. So, first up, we have Nasser Elson Batty versus Samson Dowda. So when it comes to height and weight, this is actually a pretty good matchup. The first thing I do notice is that their size is comparable, proportions are comparable. I think I would give Samson a slight edge from the back and the upper body in both the front and back shots though. Nasser does seem to have a little bit more separation in the lower body from both the front and the back, so this is a tight race between these two, you guys. I think the midsection I would have to give to Samson overall, and I think that's going to be the tiebreaker for me. Also, I think Samson has a bit more depth in the back shots, so this one is tight you guys, but overall, I'm going to give this one to Samson Dowda. Now in 5th place, we have Big Rami and Sean Ray, which is not quite the same matchup as what we saw with 6th place here. So you have a former 2 time Mr. Olympia champ. And then you have Sean Ray, who many consider to be an uncrowned Mr. Olympia. Obviously, you guys, you have to give the size to Big Rami, but at the same time, proportions and symmetry definitely go to Sean Ray. I think conditioning is pretty comparable, but I would have to give a slight edge to Sean Ray, especially through the chest and shoulders. The overall pleasing aesthetics of Sean Ray, I think, overtake the size of Big Rami, especially given the comparable conditioning. So, you guys, this one has to go to Sean Ray, in my opinion. Now, in fourth place for each respective Olympia, we have Brandon Curry and Kevin Lavroni. This is another solid matchup. I actually had to watch this one a few times to really come down to a decision. So, when we look at these guys from a size standpoint, this is another solid matchup. I wouldn't say either is outsizing the other, but I would say that Kevin has the advantage in the legs from the front and, and you know, from the back too, actually. Conditioning-wise through the legs, you can see a lot more separation and more quad sweep, and that's not just because the camera has some zoomed in leg shots of Kevin here. Brandon does look like he has some lat width from the front over Kevin, and maybe some size on Kevin in the arms as well. So, you know, I think this matchup is probably the closest we've had so far. And most would have expected Kevin to just walk away with this one, but there's a lot to consider here. Kevin from the back, I think, takes the win here though. You could give it to Kevin just based on the separation in the lower body, although Brandon may have a bit more depth through his back than Kevin, just a little bit more, I still think Kevin takes it. Kevin also looks a lot more dry than Brandon, so I think overall, this one has to go to Kevin, by a slight margin, but you know, he did have to work for this win, I think. So now we start getting into the real interesting comparisons. We're into the top three. So to start in third place, we had Nick Walker and Chris Cormier. So from the second these two guys walk out, my eyes are drawn to Nick. Nick has the far superior size and that grainy conditioning. Nick's overall silhouette due to the shoulder width really does make him look impressive. Now Chris is not being outsized, but Nick is definitely the bigger guy in this comparison. Chris Cormier's midsection looks good too, you know, very streamlined and he has a flat stomach, but with the width of Nick and his midsection control, I think that Nick has him in the midsection too, honestly. Nick's abs are definitely deeper cut, you gotta give the front shots to Nick too. When these guys move to the back, I would say that aesthetics you could give to Chris, but again, Nick's size and grainy conditioning is winning him this comparison. I will say, although it's not a significant factor, but some of Chris's belly dancing posing, you know, it's just a bit distracting to me, you know, and, and maybe that's just a personal preference thing, but it does seem a bit distracting. Just where I feel that Nick is presenting himself just as, you know, the monster that he is, and that he's presenting an overwhelming, you know, overpowering position for Nick, you know, I feel. Nick definitely improved his posing in the 2022 Olympia. So, given Nick's size and grainy hard conditioning, this one has to go to Nick. <laughs> Congrats, Nick. You just beat out a living legend. 
All right, now we move into our second place matchup here. Derek Lunsford versus Flex Wheeler. I have a feeling that this is going to be a good one. Flex was so well known for his transitional posing, and he's obviously showcasing it here in the best possible way. He knew he was battling for the title, same as Derek knew he was in the running for the win. But Flex had a chip on his shoulder from the 1998 Olympia, and you can see how much he wants it. I think conditioning-wise from the front, Flex has more striations and separation, especially across the chest and through the quads. Derek does have an arguably better X-frame, though since he seems to be a bit wider across the chest and shoulders, but the conditioning of Flex just can't be ignored. I think Derek does have better conditioning through the lower body from the back though, which I wasn't really expecting. Derek might have a bit more back thickness than Flex, and Derek's back double bicep was a showstopper at the Olympia in 2022, but Flex just has so much more detail, you know, I find. That's that signature 90s dryness and conditioning on full display right there. You can see it through the back and through the most muscular, you know, it's just, it's so signature and so recognizable from that era. It's what Derek is missing, honestly. This comparison is going to go to Flex, but again, I do think Derek was not as far behind as everyone would have expected, especially in the back shots. So, that brings us to our last comparison. The two Mr. Olympia winners, one from 1999 and one from 2022. We've got the Persian Wolf, Hadi Chupin, and the king of bodybuilding, Ronnie Coleman. Now, how do these two guys match up? Okay, so to start, is anyone else really surprised at the conditioning between these two guys? You know, Hottie is really holding his own against the king in the conditioning department. Look, obviously overall size has to go to Ronnie, but both of these guys are fairly well proportioned from the front. But when these guys turn to the back, conditioning, yeah, I, I would have to give to Ronnie. But I think the balance between upper body and lower body is more in favor of Hottie Chupin. It's amazing that Hottie really has anything on Ronnie since on paper, you know, in every shot, Ronnie should be winning. But I really think Hottie does have a better upper body to lower body symmetry from the back. But I think that's really where it ends for Hottie. Maybe you could argue Hottie has a better midsection, but Ronnie overall just, I mean, he has bigger arms, a bigger back, bigger legs, more thickness, more roundness, more dryness, more separation. I mean, it's Ronnie Coleman. He's the king. In 1999, there's a lot of argument between 1999 and 2003 being his best look, so this is arguably Ronnie's best look too. When Ronnie hits that most muscular especially, you can just see that it's Ronnie Coleman all day for the win. Look, I think most people would have called this one, but again, I do think this is a situation where you put these guys next to each other, it's closer than you would have thought originally. Okay, so the way I see it, we had some pretty fair comparisons to look at from the top six in 1999 and 2022. The top six from each era, I think were all great. And again, this was definitely not a runaway for the 1999 Olympia. But at the end of the day, the score stands at four wins for the lineup in 1999 and two wins for the lineup in 2022. So why exactly did 1999 take home the win on this one? Well, first off, Rami was off. I think if Rami had shown up like he did in 2020, he may have pushed Sean Ray a little bit harder to score that win, but the guys in 2022 had some good shots and comparable condition, but at the end of the day, arguably, were not as conditioned as the 1999 lineup. I think overall symmetry scored some major points for the guys in the 1999 lineup too. That flow mixed with that signature 90s dryness and conditioning just put these guys up and over the top. So I think it's safe to say that 1999 was the greatest Olympia competition. So why was 2022 hyped up by bodybuilding experts to be the best that we've seen in so many years? Did the industry just try to build up the hype so that they could sell more tickets, get more views and make more money? I mean, maybe, but I don't think that the influence of the industry could overcome the tenacity of the bodybuilding fans. The bottom line is we saw who was in that lineup in 2022. We saw the update pictures and videos. We were all front row and center for it all. So I'm actually of the opinion that the fans decided that 2022 could have been the best Olympia since 1999. But again, why? Well, like I said, with so many unbelievable updates that we witnessed leading up to the Olympia, I think that if everyone would have come in completely on and the margins were so razor thin that you could flip a coin on who would have been in what placing in the top six, or even the top 10 for that matter, 
that is exactly why 2022 could have been the greatest Olympia since 1999. But I think that's why 1999 is still considered the greatest Olympia of all time, as chosen by us, the fans. Because the margins between competitors in the top six especially were actually that razor thin. Nobody was the slightest bit off. Everyone was rock hard conditioned, full, symmetrical, tight midsections, everything. It was the perfect lineup. The comparisons have shown us decisively that 1999 stands as the greatest Olympia of all time. And for all you guys, you know, say the 1998 Olympia lovers or, you know, the 2013 Olympia lovers, I know that there's some of you guys out there. Leave me a comment down below and I'll consider doing a 1998 or maybe a 2013 comparison to the 1999 Olympia in the future to really settle the score for some of you guys. But yeah, this was a really fun video to make. Thank you again for your enthusiasm in the comment section, which led to the creation of this video ultimately. And leave me another comment down below on this, you know, has your opinion changed after watching some of the comparisons? Or are you even more reassured in your original decision as to what Olympia was the best of all time? You guys let me know. Anyway, that's it for this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to EP09. Be sure to like and subscribe.